Just how deep does the rabbit hole go? I got a couple of interesting comments from my last video that I wanted to touch on. The first one comes from Joseph Krasowskis, which I believe is in the Philadelphia area. Whatever the case, he says, I remember when Erie Lackawanna had a few engines with a red, white, and blue color scheme for the Bicentennial. Yes, you are indeed right. And we have one such engine here, which is clearly at this point the Conrail era. 3632, former Erie Lackawanna in the red, white, and blue Bicentennial scheme. Simple, but attractive, along with an Erie Lackawanna, uh, not Erie Lackawanna, but along with the Lehigh Valley in cab switcher. Okay, that's Lehigh Valley number 125, in cab switcher number 125, along with the Erie Lackawanna Bicentennial unit and a Conrail caboose, which just looking at it from here, looks like it's either an ex-Lehigh Valley or maybe an ex-New York Central. Steve Ramiza is one of the esteemed employees of Norfolk Southern who works out of Taylor Yard, and he says... There's a sand customer at Bevere Street Yard, and now it's been reconfigured three times in the last 10 years to accommodate it. Well, he's talking about the Bevere Street Yard in Binghamton, New York, which we talked about in the last video. And yes, you're right, Steve. It has been a, um, it has been reconfigured many times, and I've actually been to that yard, and I've got some pictures here. So let's take a look at what we got. Straight out of our historical collection is this picture of a CP train, a Canadian Pacific d &H train, moving towards Albany, New York, through the Bevere Street Yard. And you can see the area's most prominent landmark, which is the old Agway Agricultural Station, or facility, I should say, which stood for many, many years. It still stands today, but it's no longer Agway. It's, it's a Purdue now, which you'll see later in the video. But notice those four SD40-2s. You've got a yellow Gaddix one leading, plus a CP Pac-Man, and two Sioux lines. Now, we talked about those Gaddix SD40-2s, those leash units, in the very first volume of our 50th anniversary SD40-2 special series. And like I said, here's what it looks like today. It's a Purdue plant. Um, building itself looks pretty much the same. In fact, if you look closely, you can actually see some very faded remnants of where the Agway was once painted there. But, you know, time marches on. Now, here's where it really gets, uh, <laughs> shall we say, ominous. You can see how it's, the area is all fenced in now, so you can't rail fan there anymore. That this that fence wasn't there just a couple of years ago. When I took these pictures, it was summer of 2020. So the fence was relatively new at that point, and you can see all the sand cars there in the area of the plant. And if you look closely in this dirt this uh, dirt area in the foreground, if you look very closely, you can see back there. There's a pair of tracks move that are in that dirt area from a spur that used to used to go down the street. Moving right along, panning to our right or compass direction north, we see more fenced in area and more sand cars. Moving along to our right, or shall I say compass north, we can see more sand cars, more fenced in railroad that rail fans no longer have any access to. And we also see the Broome County Cold Storage Industrial Spur. Now, do you remember when I showed you that in the last video? In the last video, that spur wasn't gated up like it is now. None of that fencing was there. That fencing is all relatively new. Now, these pictures were taken back in 2020, so I'm not sure how long the fencing was there prior to that. But if we happen to have any modelers out there, I took the following pictures, especially for you. Take a look at the Broome County Industrial Spur with no rail car there. Now, I don't know how long it's been since this particular business has gotten rail service but i do believe it's been a while but what i really liked about these shots was take a look at that end of track stop bumper stopper whatever you want to call it i call it a bumper but it's made of railroad ties but most importantly look how where the wheel flanges of the rail cars have butted up against that bumper eating away at the um at the wood and also look in the middle where the airline hoses have rubbed against that and have worn away from have worn the wood away it's little details like these that really make a model railroad pop. So if there are any modelers out there, pay particular attention to the details in this particular scene. Because this particular industry can be modeled on a railroad, on a model railroad of any size, big or small. But most important, it adds a lot of realism to a railroad, a model railroad, whether you're using it as an actual live industry that's being served by the railroad or one that was served by the railroad at some point in time. While we were here on this particular day, we fortunately ran into the westbound 23K out of Ayer, Massachusetts. Now, by, at this point in the game, this was still a single stack train. 
once PSR hit, this became a double stack train, and it was combined with another train, the westbound auto racks, which I can't remember what the symbol was on that. I want to say it was 287, but don't quote me on that. I, I can't remember what the symbol was for the westbound auto rack. I know that the eastbound auto racks was the 28N. But either way, they both got combined with the 22K and the 23K. So now the 22K and 23K are no longer single stack trains like they used to be. And they've since been doubled up with the 28N going eastbound and what, what, I, what I think was the 287 going westbound, which was the auto rack. So you now have double stacks and auto racks on one train. And also they used to run with two locomotives where they now run with three. And who knows, you might even get four of them on it if you're lucky. Once the 23K is passed us by, we get to see what Steve Ramiz was talking about, which is that sand area. Now, this was taken in 2017, so it hadn't been fenced off yet. So the fencing went up somewhere between 2017 and 2020. Either way, you can't rail fan this area like I am anymore because it's all now fenced off, as you just saw. 